But we're pleased to be able to be joined by Dr. Nick Vitanza at Seattle Children's Hospital to talk to us a little bit about CAR-T and uh, what makes it different and uh, explain a little bit how it actually works. So I'll turn it over to you. Sure. Thank you very much for this opportunity to talk about CAR-T cells with you all. So I know there's a few misconceptions about it, but there's also a lot of excitement. So my hope is to just go through some basic things, not necessarily in particular about Seattle's program, but just in general to help with the understanding of what this process is. But I think as we all know, for a lot of pediatric brain tumors, most of the malignant tumors when they come back or some diseases like DIPG in the beginning, radiation can only do so much and chemotherapy can only do so much. So these days there's a very broad basket of things called immunotherapy, which are using the immune system to target the tumor. And that's a wide variety of things you can use. And only one thing in that bucket is CAR T cells. And CAR T cells are really an engineering delivery method of a therapy. And so CAR T cells are gonna vary a lot based on what you're targeting, how you engineer them, and the way different institutions run these trials in a lot of granular ways, like how often you dose or where you actually deliver the T cells. So there's a lot of variability and there should not be a reason to believe any one T cell would act the same as another one on a different trial. So there's unfortunately gonna be a lot of variability in this. One thing that you do with CAR T cells, and I'll show just a few pictures here, is that essentially you're taking out somebody's white blood cells, specifically their T cells, which are the yellow cell there. And you take them away from a patient, not an amount they'd miss, and then you engineer them so they have a new receptor on their surface. And that receptor should be able to target things that are on the surface of the tumor. And so they specifically will target the tumor and not other parts of the body. So CAR T cells really, when they're working in their best possible sensor, are targeted immunotherapy specific for a tumor. The proof of principle that this works was initially leukemia trials where targeting a molecule CD19 on leukemia led to fantastic results in children with leukemia. For example, children with current leukemia that got CAR T cells had a 93% remission rate in the Seattle Children's Study. And about 60% of those patients ended up being long-term survivors, which unfortunately we know is not the norm for phase one trials. Based on that result, a lot of groups, what I'm showing here is specifically City of Hope, uh, mostly adult, but also pediatric center in California, showed that they could give CAR T cells directly into the brain of adults with brain tumors and spinal cord tumors. And what you see here on the right is that they were able to get remissions of disease where the, the disease was going away and shrinking, both seen here on MRI and PET scan. So this work by Christine Brown at City of Hope um, and Mike Jensen was really the foundation that CNS CAR T cells targeting brain tumors was possible. What we wanted to do in Seattle was map this out and, and find out what are the best things to target. And so we opened two trials that target two things, HER2 and EGFR. They're two separate trials called Brainchild 1 and Brainchild 2. And we enroll children, we remove their white blood cells, we engineer the CAR T cells, which takes about 24 days. And then children come back to Seattle and get their CAR T cells de delivered directly into the brain through a small little plastic button under the scalp called an omaya. And they either get the CAR T cells directly into the tumor cavity, which is that localized area, arm A, or for children who unfortunately have disease in more than one area, they get the fluid put into the ventricles, which is a fluid system in the brain, which should allow the CAR T cells to move around to multiple areas. The way that we dose, and this will vary between studies, is with weekly dosing for most of our studies and most of our arms. So children come back and as an outpatient, totally in the clinic, will come to clinic and get these infusions on a weekly basis with a fourth week off, and then a second course on a weekly basis where they often go up a dose level so children are allowed to get more than one dose while they're on the trial. And then depending on how children do after the first two months, they can continue. Here it says through course three through six, but we recently got approval from the FDA to treat indefinitely for children who are doing well. And this is, our dosing is a little different. It's not per weight, like with a lot of drugs, it's just a flat number of cells starting off at 10 million. And eventually we're working up in our trials to hundred million cells per dose which we already are in some trials. Now, our first two trials didn't include DIPG just as we were getting used to how the RCAR T cells operate, but we developed a third trial, Brainchild 3, which targets a molecule B7H3, which we're very excited about because we think it's something that's not on brain, but is on a large variety of pediatric brain tumors, including DIPG. And so for that trial, we opened a specific arm for children with DIPG, arm C. And the only difference in the treatment is that instead of every week, children get treatment every other week on that arm. So across all these CAR T cell studies, what we're doing is we're really engineering your own white blood cells and then delivering them back into the brain 
with the hope that they will get to the tumor, engage with the tumor, and CAR T cells can really act as serial killers of tumor, where they can attack one cell, destroy it, move on to the next cell, destroy it. We're still learning what the limitations and potential benefits are of CAR T cells, but there'll be a wide variety in studies, both on potential side effects, which could be based on what you're targeting or how the CAR T cell is engineered or where you're delivering it. And so there could also be a lot of different benefits across different trials. So there's several excellent centers that all have trials, and I would expect that we'll see variability in all of those things. And it's gonna take a few years until we learn what are the best targets, what are the best delivery systems. And CAR T cells for brain and spinal cord tumors are really in their infancy. And it's gonna take several years until we perfect this, start targeting more than one target at a time, find out the best place to deliver them. And so those are all things that we as a community are working on together, and I hope that we'll get there soon. Is there uh, different uh, ages that are applicable for these types of treatments, uh, or is it something that's just a young adult type of thing? I mean, what are you finding out there? Yeah, that's a great question. So the FDA asked when we opened our trials, we were the first pediatric center delivering them directly into the brain, that we start off enrolling children over 15, and our maximum age is 26. So about the first year we had the trials open in 2018, we were treating 15 to 26. But after the first three patients on each trial, we were allowed to expand to all ages. And so for our trials, we treat two to 20, sorry, we treat one to 26 years of age across our trials. Different institutions are gonna have different rules. Maybe not everyone is comfortable treating up to 26, depending on their pediatric institution. Maybe not everyone is um, comfortable treating down to the age of one, depending on their delivery system. Because we don't sedate children and because we don't have mandatory admissions, we've had younger children, like we're treating a two-year-old now who comes to clinic and watches his iPad um, and we numb the area over his infusion site and we deliver the T-cells and he's watched for a few hours and he's able to go home. So we've found it feasible so far for younger children, but each hospital will have different age requirements, maybe based on what they expect out of their CAR T-cell and what their pediatric team is comfortable managing. Fantastic. Uh, and if people want to learn more, obviously, there is going to be a link back to uh, Dr. Vitanza's uh, uh, lab and more information about uh, CAR-T as well. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, sure. Thank you all very much. And if I could say just one more thing, there's a couple other excellent institutions who are also doing this work. So Baylor, Stanford, City of Hope, Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, there's other teams who have programs and there will be some variability. And it's really just the augmentation of the T-cells and delivery, which is the same. But hopefully as a community, all of these kind of um, institutions working on this are going to make a lot of progress together. And chances are there'll probably be more permutations of this as well. And it uh, sounds like a successful strategy. Thank you very yeah, much. Thank you. Thank you for your time.